Hi guys, we're going to talk about tools you need if you're going to build a kit boat. Um, it would be nice if you had all these power tools. You could get by with some of them, but here's what I use. This router is a cutoff router for when you're trimming your edge. This router is used to trim the radius. And of course the drill and the uh, driver are used when you're fastening stuff on. This tool is a grinder with a 36 grit flapper disc on it. And I use that to knock off hard edges and stuff like this in here, getting it down to size. This random orbital I use for sanding, finishing before, after I've fared and before I finish, and I'll use 36 grit and 80 grit on it. This tool right here is my honey. Um, this um, sander polisher, I run it at about 2,000 RPMs. I put it right on two, and I use a 36 grit pad on it, these stick it pads on these eight inch discs, and it's a uh, it's a medium pad. It's not super soft and it's not super hard. And that, that tool I use for beginning to fair and to knock things down flat. You don't want to turn that tool. You want to leave that tool dead flat when you're using it like this. And not pressing really, mostly lifting. You're not pushing hard on it. All right, those are the power tools. These are the hand tools that you can't get by without. Rollers, I use this hot dog roller a lot when I'm doing fine areas where you don't maybe have room for this um, fatter roller. But those two rollers, you need a ridge roller. I use two, but you could get away with one. If you only had one, I'd get the three quarter inch diameter ridge roller. And you're using that to press your fiberglass material together and raise the resin up to the surface. These are different applicators. I use all of these. Uh, these flat applicators for fairing on flat surfaces, this for radiuses, and this for fine radiuses. Of course you need a good pair of scissors, magic markers, pencils, stir sticks, measuring cups in liters, don't ever use ounces, always use liters because a thousand is easy to divide into. You're going to need tape, disposable gloves, paper towels, alcohol, acetone. I don't have any acetone up here, but you're going to need acetone to clean your tools when you have resin or putty on them. Anything that you get resin on, you need acetone to clean with and you'll need to keep your gloves on when you're doing it. You'll need a dispenser like this, which I'll give you for mixing, uh, for measuring your catalyst and your resin and putty and stuff in here. You'll need a flat surface that you can mix putty on. Uh, I use this piece of fiberglass. I've been using it for a couple of years and then I, I wipe it down and when it gets crunchy chunks on it, I'll just grind it off with my sander polisher. But that's pretty essential if you're mixing up putty, you mix it up on here and then scoop it off and then put it on. Um, that's about it. You need a, uh, uh, some kind of a long measuring tool when you're dividing stuff. You need a uh, tape measure for sure to measure things when you're measuring and cutting cloth and measuring how wide you have to do it. A level when you're setting everything out, straight edge to make sure your things are level. You don't, you don't want it all bowed up. You see how it's kind of bowed at the end? I have to work on that to get that all level. And then you'll need clamps when you're putting things together or at least weights. And I use these right here. I use these blocks to weight things down. When I'm setting caps on and gluing them down, I'll set these on there to, to hold it in place. But that's, 
that's pretty much your basic needs. And this is, this is what I used to finish with now. It's called Liner Extreme and it's a polyurethane finish that's thick. It's like a Rhino liner and the, you need that that's the finish and then you use this epoxy you can use any epoxy primer to prime the surface first before you finish it but that's pretty much it <laughs>